Hello my friends and welcome to SNC Custom Designs. We are now working on part two of repurposing um, a unit I made in the 90s uh, basically out of particle board and I noticed upon, upon further inspection I used nails. This is a simple butt joint. Butt joint, everything you see in blue is, is what was, okay? And if we can see, uh, there's a board behind, if I wanted to go around there. I want to try to be conscientious of you people watching, my subscribers watching my videos on your big screen TV. So uh, we're going to try not to make you angry in a short period of time. So again, welcome to AC Custom Designs. If you like what you see, by the way, please uh, feel free to subscribe to our channel. Um, and leave your comments and give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. If it's a thumbs down, let us know why. We'll try to improve. Uh, please leave your comments. We will get back to your comments. You can see that in our history um, that we do that. And we like to learn from you and you from us. In my videos, my friends, you're going to hear all kinds of uh, different subjects. But there's going to be a main theme-ish. Okay, in this case, it's, it's, it's uh, basically taking this piece that was sitting around and my wife said, can you make that into a printer station? And I said, yes, ma'am. Um, so at any rate, uh, I want to talk about something now that it's summertime, and that is the humidity levels in your wood shop. At the moment, we got 52. Yesterday outside, it was 98% um, and 94 degrees. It was very unusual for June 18, 2018. Um, but we have a dehumidifier running 24 seven. If we come over here, we can see that it's working hard to keep this place at 50 percent i've got 54 percent um over here so um it's continuing to work so get one of these guys you're going to want to do that you you know you're investing a lot of money into your tools you know and you know they sit around in the humidity and they're going to get rusty on you um so you don't want that to happen um so that's that uh subject now let's get back to our unit. Now in part one, and please look that video up, we made this shelf and this flappity garage door type unit. I actually designed that around those hinges. <laughs> I found the hinges, I'm like, what can I make to fit onto that? So at any rate, this is what I came up with. If we lift that up, we can see we've got a ream of paper in there and uh, this just goes down like this. We'll put a handle on there, so that's the paper unit. Uh, we don't have to see the paper, and that closes real nice. This whole thing's gonna be painted again. Um, so the, some of the challenges I had was, for example, when I routered, not this beast, but <laughs> a hand router, you're gonna come in here, and you're gonna see what I'm talking about. We went routering, and we're good, 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 whoops, you can see right there. We had to stop because the base of the router essentially uh, was here and so the router bit couldn't go to the back so really all you do is you notch that out so watch that video that'll be a tip if you have not uh, thought about how to overcome that obstacle again it's existing a uh, unit so I'm, I'm not really going to I'm gonna swing this around you know take the time to take the back off you know uh, I'm not sure what you can see here but uh, you know there's the back and so that was not a problem all right so another uh, issue of two part uh, 2a which I didn't video was basically simple simply to bring this top portion out to meet the edge and to meet this board here because in here is going to be a drawer we'll talk about that next okay um, we already did cut we cut out the pieces for the drawer and they're sitting here. This is part two, what you're watching at the moment. Part three is going to be making the joints over on this dovetail uh, unit here. This is Lee D4R Pro. This is simply the best on the planet. Prove me wrong, my friends. Uh, 24 inches that you can work with stock. Okay, the pins are all configurable. You can move them anywhere in any orientation you would like at the moment i have it set up to make the the drawers a little again it's overkill really for what i'm doing because it's going to be painted 
Now we're going to do part three here, and hopefully I'm going to have a, a video person helping me out. Um, and so uh, let's come back over here. So what, what were some of the other challenges? Well, even to put this board on, right? I'm going to show you what happens here. Through time, Father Time is our enemy. Okay, here, right? Oops. Houston, we have a problem. And we're okay at the edge. Okay? So, uh, not a problem. We'll sand that down. That's not a problem. But, it became a problem when it comes to this inside cavity here. Okay? Being like this. And so, I had to take my uh, boards and I had to keep cutting them down. So much so that the top of the drawer face comes to here now. Um, you might say, why didn't you leave the front the way it is? Because you could have got pretty close, right? And you can do some sanding to fool the eye so that it looks right. Um, but the, the, the key is, if you've got one of these guys, they're going to go through and they're going to talk about the best way, the absolute way to use their jig. And by the way, it's the, pan, the, uh, the manual is second to none. The user guide is amazing. So, I mean, I like pictures, my friends. I love pictures. And uh, they do a great job. But the details on how to use this unit is just simply amazing. Um, I flipped to page 22 on simple through dovetail box, which I've got here, but these are pens. I'm going to be making dovetails and pens like that. So, at any rate, uh, overkill, I know, because we're going to paint this. But the reason why I want to... Uh, I want to get uh, used to using this guy again because it's been such a long time since I've used it. Uh, one of the last times it was used, I set the thing up for somebody else to use. It took me like an hour and a half because, you know, if you don't do this every day, which I don't, uh, unless he custom designs works in the evenings and the weekends. So at any rate, QR software guy in the daytime. So it was fun to watch that person work, though. You know, it's not very often we get to do that. <laughs> all right so uh the challenges the challenges so we're going to take so these this is the stock so again part two is going over the, you know the the drawer part three is going to be making the uh we'll be making the, the the joinery and we'll be cutting in a small groove at the bottom to receive probably luan i'll probably use luan that's pretty much my go-to when i uh need to make a bottom right uh, for the drawer and uh, so on and so forth so at any rate um, the challenges I had was we're gonna go sh go ahead and put the the back in okay I, I mean I measured from here to here and I quickly figured out that from here to here is not the same so I had to keep cutting it down oops this guy goes like this probably going to put the camera down so that I could actually do this with a reasonable control and you guys with really big TVs watching me are saying thank you Steve <laughs> sorry about that guys I really am one day I'll have a system that I don't have to play these games with all right two hands better than one those. see how easy that went in my friends now that's what you want. So I had to make those adjustments along the way. And, hit, and I, I'm very, very anal. Let me show you this. Let me come around the back so I make sure you can see what I'm saying. I mark things out very, very clear. This says side, okay, side right, outside, back, front. It may seem very obvious where these pieces go until you get a phone call, you got to go hug your wife, let the dog out, these types of things. And then you're in the middle of routing and, or doing whatever you're doing, you come back and you continue in the wrong orientation. That's happened to me one too many times, my friends. So here it is. Here's my drawer, dry fitted, without the joints, of course. And here's that space I spoke about. So what I'll do is I'll simply use some artistic, uh, poetic justice, or poetic right, rather, and I'll just fill that piece in. 
Um, it really, in this case, it's not going to matter because it's going to be painted, so you're probably going to be, not be none the wiser that this isn't one solid front piece. So you see, you adjust to the, 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 uh, the challenges along the way. So don't be discouraged. Just give yourself some time and you'll think about uh, how to make a thing right. Okay? So that's the drawer. Um, I didn't take the time to show you how I did this. Basically, I used my table saw and, uh, and the uh, rear arm saw. And that's how I basically uh, made all these guys uniform. So, now, the, the shame about the project is that I'm only making one specific drawer with that configuration on the lead uh, the dovetail jig. Um, really, ideally, you want to do things in bulk. And, well, I can show you that. that a, a year ago or so, I did something in bulk. So I sold a couple of uh, ladder shelves uh, between now and then, um, but then I made extra. So I've got uh, th one, two, three, four uh, of these guys here. Okay. Whoops. Sorry. 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 So these are pins still in their rough. There's no need to sand that out yet. So basically simple pine. Okay. And I have actually cabinet grade ply board down here. This is really, really good quality ply board. Okay. So that's what I mean by doing things in bulk. So you will never regret uh, that journey. Now that we're over here, October 7th and August 25th, we've got two shows going on. One is Agodat uh, Dachim, a local uh, synagogue that is has a very, very popular venue for vendors. My two kids were born here, two of my kids, two out of two, at the Maybe House. We're going to have a show there, uh, and so that's just going to be a lot of fun. Um, so, hey, you get to see some other parts of the wood shop if you've not seen my... Um, videos you'll see that I put things on wheels so you can move them around um, also like the drill press unit um, is on wheels uh, this is the where I store uh, paints and stuff like this I have a poly shot in the back of the yard look up those videos um, it's like the Crystal Palace this is a, a sanding booth with two portals back there that I could hook up to my jet uh, dust collector I have also, um, this little simple look up that episode, that's basically uh, goes on top of your, in this case, it's the Jaws Day in Rockwell. Um, and uh, basically, it's, it's like an extender for uh, w extending something off of a table saw, wh whatever you're working on. Okay. Then I have a sliding um, platform that goes on your table saw. That is amazing. You just can work so safely and quickly when you have to do repeated operations. And you don't want to have to worry about uh, uh, taking your square or, you know, your fence or something like this. Um, just amazing. They ride inside these grooves. That unit there. Again, on wheels. I'm going to have to adjust this again for my video. <laughs> um, so, we have so many tools in our wood shop. Look up the uh, reviews. Everything you see has a story on it. So I made a base here with wheels. Can move that around the shop within reason. Um, I've got I used utilized Carter tools. Uh, this is the fast system, which is amazing for uh, adjusting bandsaw drift. Uh, if you don't know what that is, look up my video. Um, we have the Carter Magfence Two, uh, which is uh, got rare magnets on, which you can put up here. My unit did not come with a fence, um, and so I, I'm kind of glad I, that it didn't. i got to plug in my phone because it's about to die. Hopefully everything's going to be fine. So, all right, part two, a little bit choppy. Sorry about that, guys. Um, but we made the drawer, and um, now I'm kind of in a pickle here. I just wanted to talk about one last subject, and that is when you are not ready uh, to use your pine you put a lot of time into making the pieces that go into the project in this case it's going to be a drawer and I'm not going to be able to get that piece out now but basically what I want you to do my friends is clamp them clamp them together overnight even overnight because with the conditions in your shop you may find that it's going to warp especially when it's really really dry 
okay that's when you you, you know and over time you want to clamp your pieces again you put a lot of quality time in making these perfect the last thing you need is for them to do that silly little thing all right thanks again coming into the shop of SC Custom Designs. Uh, we also have the router all set and uh, we got the bit in there, the dovetail bit. And there's two bits that you use when you're using the, the Lee uh, dovetail system. When you're using that system over there, um, you're going to have two bits. One of them is a straight bit and one of them is looks like a dovetail. So it's a dovetail. Um, and so those are the two uh, bet you, you're going to use. They make it so easy. Okay. Um, back when I did the video of using this, I video somebody using it, and then other videos. I wasn't as extensive, and didn't put in a lot of terrible, a lot of detail on using the unit. That's going to be part three. You're going to want to watch part three. That's three uh, of modifying this existing unit and making it into a printer station. You're going to want to watch it because we're going to have someone videoing me so you won't have the shaking and quaking and you're going to see how to use that guy over there okay so uh thanks for coming to my shop my friends again sc custom designs if you like my videos uh, please subscribe and leave comments if you don't like them give me a thumbs down but tell me why and uh, leave your comments and we'll get back to you guys and we'll try to improve thanks for coming to my shop it's always a pleasure when you come into my shop that means that uh, you want to learn something about 360 plus videos now where we talk about a variety of subjects uh, whenever we buy something whatever you see in my shop sorry about my hand there um, planer uh, rigid oscillating uh, belt sander here uh, the jet 14 inch bandsaw over there everywhere you know one day we're gonna I promise to do a, uh, a, a complete tour of my shop to show you the stuff that, uh, that that can help you along the journey when you're making things. And do you need all this stuff? You don't need all this stuff. Does it help? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, really, I mean, in Israel, that's where I learned how to do these things. I had a wood hammer, some, some hammers like this, chisels. We had saws, uh, particularly the one over there in the middle. You may say, where's the middle? Uh, this guy here. So you can make uh, dovetail joints with, with that and chisels. So yeah, that's how it rolled. So I understand what it's like not to have a lot of tools, trust me. So, uh, all right. Thanks again for watching, guys. We really appreciate spending time in my shop. Come back now and see part three, where we're going to make the joints for the drawer.